Night Hunt are one of my favorite armies for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. And with the new book coming out, I figured I'd show you how I painted mine. Let's get to it. The Night Hunt range is full of a lot of very cool sculpts, but they tend to have a lot of flat open surfaces on them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the basing and add in a little bit of extra texture to really set things apart. We're using a fine grain texture here for the basing, and we want to do this next step while the basing is still wet. We're going to use a paint that dries with a sort of crackled or flaky effect. In this case, a ghrelin earth from Citadel. We're going to add this anywhere that we think needs a little bit more interest. And on the base, we're gonna put a few dabs in there while the basing is still wet so that it kind of mixes in and blends. Here's what the mini looks like now that all of that texture is dried. Next, go ahead and prime the mini with a matte black of your choice. Once the primer has set, we're gonna come in from above with a white ink and an airbrush. This is both going to act as something of a zenithal, as well as most of our actual base coat. Just get all of the areas that you think light will catch the best. Now for a quick undershade, we're gonna come in from beneath with an airbrush and hex wraith flame. We just want to hit all of those dark or shadowy areas to give them a bit of a spooky green tint. Now for any leather or wooden bits on the miniature. We're going to come over this with a dark chocolate brown, in this case dryad bark. Just be careful not to overpaint too much onto the things that we don't want to be brown. Moving on to the metallics, we're going to use this desaturated gold color to hit anything that we want to be either brass or gold. This will go on pretty smoothly and just kind of have to guide it with the brush tip. Not so much fully brush it on. For the silver metals, we're going to use VMC Burnt Iron to add a nice aged metal look to any chains or weapons, and even the face mask on this ghost. With our base colors blocked in, it's time for a black enamel wash. And we're gonna get this over the whole thing, including, as you can see, the gravestone there to help tie that into the rest of the mini. When that's done, we're going to let it sit for about 
30 to 45 minutes. Just enough to cure a little bit, but not dry completely because we want a little bit of play in it for the next step. With that wash settled, but not quite dry, we're gonna come back in with a clean brush and a little bit of mineral spirits and kind of work it over the surfaces, removing most of the wash, but also helping to feather around any that might remain and naturally just kind of blend some of the colors together. As you're doing this, just be careful with those areas of crackle texture that we did earlier. If you work the brush over them too firmly, it will start to cause those flakes to peel away and reveal just bare plastic beneath. It's okay if this happens a couple of times during the process, but we don't want to have the whole effect flake off. After that, give everything a good while to dry before bringing back our airbrush and white ink. We're going to use this to pick out any areas that we would like to eventually glow especially over those crackle texture areas, maybe some trailing ends of the spooky ectoplasm cape thing, and even some of the cracks on the base. We're also going to use a brush to pick out the eyes, nose, and gem on the face mask. If you'd like, at this point, you can actually go and finish up most of the base, save for the glow. We're just going with a quick wildwood contrast wash here on the dirt portion of the base. And then we're gonna use a Militarum green on the vines. Once that contrast paint is dry, we're going to come in with a dawn stone or a light gray and just dry brush the earth texture. Make sure to go back and pop out those portions you want to glow on the base with some white afterwards. Now it's time for that spooky glow. We're going to come in with some green fluorescent and hit all of those areas that we brightened up with white previously. Don't worry if you overspray when using the airbrush just a little bit, as this is actually kind of the effect we're going for, as it'll mimic the glow sort of bouncing off or fading into other surfaces. Next, take some white ink and your brush and use it to pick out any areas that you want to be a little bit brighter in the glow, such as the eyes or the centers of any of the larger cracked textures we made. Lastly, we just need to go back over any of the areas that we used white on with that green fluorescent again, and finish out the glow. And from here, all that's left to do is to finish up the bases and varnish the mini. As always, if you like this video, feel free to click that like button down there to let me know. And if you've got any questions, go ahead and leave a comment and I'll see if I can get to it. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss a video. But in any case, thanks for watching and happy painting. <laughs>